Hello! Happy Monday! I like never do Instagram lives. Hardly ever, because it feels awkward to me. But, we're sitting out here today after an amazing weekend. Happy Monday, everyone. Um, I know some of you are going to be watching this later. And so my heart right now is to share an encouraging word because I'm sitting out back. had kind of a long day driving all over the state, doing all kinds of cool stuff. And um, coming out of like an amazing weekend, right? Like how many of you were there for A21 Walk for Freedom on Saturday? Like was that not an incredible experience? It was such a blessing to me. That was my third year. Hey, Neff. How's it going? I'm glad you're joining. I was just going to talk about some encouraging words that you and I have been talking about over the last couple days, so I'm glad you're here. Um, but A21 was amazing, right? Like, so cool. I was so honored to um, to be pulled into some of the leadership team and helping with check-ins and stuff. It was just amazing. That was my third year. So incredible. Um, I've had a lot of people actually reach out that were not a part of the walk. Or actually I actually had a friend, Lindsay, if you watch this later, um, who reached out to me. I went to high school with Lindsay. And uh, she was in. L she lives in LA and said, hey, are you in LA? Because she was driving and saw the LA walk and thought that we were walking with LA. So it opened up a really awesome opportunity for me to share with Lindsay what A21 is all about and um, encourage her to check out the website to learn more about that amazing organization. Um, so cool. And then yesterday, I know a lot of us were there for Hillsong to see Joel Abel from Australia. What an encouraging message and an amazing illustration. I was just so encouraged by that. It was exactly, exactly what my spirit needed. Um, so I'm just charged up. I just woke up today and I was like, let's do this. It's a new week. New week, new opportunities, and uh, yeah, I was ready for it. But I'm going to be really honest, um, today didn't exactly, like, not every part of it was like candy canes and rainbows and full of favor and promise like I had hoped. But um, that's not to say that God's not still at work. So I've, I've really been learning today to just abide, like Neff and I have been talking about over the last few days, like the importance of just being just being in his presence, um, not striving after God, but just seeking him. Like Matthew 7, 7 tells us that when we seek him with all of our heart and our mind and our soul, that's a different scripture, but um, same is true. That when we seek him, we'll find him. He wants to be found. He wants us to go on the journey with him, but it's not like a striving thing. Like he's closer than our breath. You know, we are the indwelling place of the Holy Spirit. He's not far. He's not hiding from us. And I just find that encouraging, but sometimes I forget, and sometimes I let, like, the challenges of life, like, make me think that, like, God's far away when He's really not, right? He's really not. He's so close, and He just wants us to just relax, relax, and just be with Him, and and He, he draws near to us. But you know what? I woke up this morning to this song. I wanted to play it for you, even in the background. It's by... Um, David Beloche, if I'm saying that correctly, on the Labyrinth album, and it's called Lead Me to the Rock, and it is based out of Psalm 61, verses 1 and 2, where it says, Oh God, listen to my cry, hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I will cry to you for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety. For you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. So that, you ever just wake up and you just have like a song on your heart and you don't know why? Like it's just like on repeat. And that's like Holy Spirit just like reminding you like, hey, listen to this song. It can encourage you today. So that was my morning wake up song. And I thought, okay, so I started off the morning that, that way, and then I drove all the way across town by the airport for a Keller Williams training event, which was awesome. And then after that, I went and got x-rays done that you may have seen in my little Instagram story. So the story behind that is I used to drive a big truck, like a giant truck, a black four-door F-150. I know, little old me, those of you that know me, I'm like five foot zero, so for me to drive a big truck is like, my, like people thought I was like they just couldn't understand <laughs> it 
But um, at the end of this month, the end of October, it'll actually be two years and it got totaled. And it was a pretty bad accident actually. Um, I got hit from behind as I was trying to avoid an accident on the highway. And I remember at that time, I just want to use this time, I know nephew's probably still watching and for those of you that are going to watch later, like this story is worth telling or it's worth hearing about because it could probably encourage somebody. So after I got hit, it was, I was in a panic because I, that was my first car loan that I ever got and I signed it with 17% interest, if you can believe it. Like that is insanely high. And so I was upside down in that truck and I was so worried that not only did I not have a working vehicle, but that I wasn't going to get paid out from it by my insurance what I owed on the loan, which meant that I would have to like basically pay to not have a truck. And then I wouldn't have any money to like put money down on a new vehicle. But God came through. He was so amazing. And my insurance company was also very amazing. And they gave me a couple thousand dollars, like $4,000 to get out of that loan they totaled it out gave me four grand I put money down on my new car at 4.1 percent interest hello favor and um, God just came through so every time I drive that car it's just like I just know that it's just a blessing and a gift from God that that even happened um, through all that pain and the fact okay and the fact that I wasn't hurt right because I got hit from behind and I'm really small and the seatbelt did not like restrain me at all so I like came up and out of my seat like flying towards the windshield and held onto the steering wheel like for dear life so that I didn't like go through the windshield so it was kind of a crazy experience but hey Mo how's it going good to see you um so I was talking about this car accident that I got into. Well, that was two years ago, and I was only able to go to the chiropractor two times after that. Two times after that crazy, wild accident. So needless to say, like I did not heal correctly at all. And the truth is, I have been in like crazy pain, like constant crazy pain for a really long time. I just really hate drawing attention to myself and being a complainer because pain isn't something that you can like really see and so um, I don't like to share it about that very often but truth is I've been in a lot of pain and I go to a chiropractor who's also my naturopathic doctor like every single week and these last couple weeks he's like Heather I know your neck really well I work on you every week but something just doesn't really seem right and I want you to get x-rays so put it off for um, almost a week and today I finally went in <laughs> to get x-rays on my neck we're just trying to see if there's any degeneration he said or like any issues with the um, with the like discs in my neck you know what I do for pain I do know what you do for pain Mo but that is not something that I'm gonna do for pain it does work for some people but not for this girl <laughs> no judgment but yes I do know what you're talking about with your little your little eye emoji thingy jig so anyways, that was the story behind the x-ray thing. So why am I telling you? Oh, then, then I, my phone's been acting super weird. So I go into Apple and I'm thinking, we're just going to get this fixed because it's acting crazy. Well, they do a diagnostic and they find that yes, in fact, it is weird, but it's not in warranty anymore. So there's really nothing that I can do about my jacked up phone, which is not really cool. And yeah, that's just not cool. It's not the report that I was hoping for. I was hoping for some favor and I didn't get it. And also I was hoping for favor when it came to paying for my x-rays today. I was really praying that it would be a lot lower than what it was, but it wasn't. And truth is finances are like kind of a problem right now. <laughs> so for me to walk out of the x-ray paying more than I hoped and thought I was going to have to pay and then also not finding favor in the phone situation. I could easily be discouraged, right? Like, that's just the truth. Like, sometimes when we're going through stuff and we're just not getting the answers that we want, we're not getting the favor that we're looking for, the, the answers to prayer just aren't there. Like, it could be super discouraging. But I just realized, as I was praying and just meditating and I got in the Word, I got my Bible out, and I remembered two things. One, Paul Scanlon was here a couple weeks ago, if you remember, if you're part of our Hillsong family. And he had this amazing message called the agony of divine delay 
and I want to link that somehow because if you haven't watched it for those friends of mine that don't go to Hillsong I'd really encourage you to watch it because in it he said I think it's important for the church to realize the importance of rising up and telling people in the midst of the issue in the midst of the problem in the messy middle because we don't always know just like the Bible we read the Bible right and we know these stories we could turn the page and we can see what happens but the truth is they were real people in a real time and when we are reading their stories different people like David or Joshua or Moses or Jesus even right like really anyone that we read about we can see their struggle um, but then we turn the page and then and then we can see what comes of it but the truth is when those people were actually living and breathing on the planet like they didn't have their life story to just like turn the other page and be like oh good okay I can relax like this is what God's gonna do like just like the rest of us that are going through things like we don't know what that next chapter is gonna look like we don't know what that next um, season of our life is going to look like. And so what Paul Scanlon had, had really challenged us with is let's get, let's talk about the messy middle. Like let's, let's be really transparent and vulnerable with each other and say like, I don't know what's going to happen and I don't know what's going to come of this. And here's where I'm at right now. But like, I have no idea what this next season is going to be like. And yes, I'm praying and yes, I'm believing and I'm praising and I'm hoping for God to have favor and to come through and his protection and his healing. But truth is, I don't know what's going to happen. And I know a lot of my friends right now that are going through some stuff who just quite simply like don't know whether it's going to happen. So I'm using this space right now just to let people know like I'm in a messy middle. Truth. Truth bomb. I'm in the messy middle. I'm not sure what's going to happen. And I also remember Pastor John Shepherd. For those of you who remember Pastor John, Pastor John said to me one time, Heather, you really want to know how to hit the devil where it hurts? He said, if you really want to get back at, at the devil for trying to come against you or whatever, and you really want to give God glory, he said, pray over other people what you are going through yourself. Even when you don't know the outcome, just start praying and believing for other people. And that'll really just oh, get that dig in to the enemy sometimes, right? And I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this space to do just that. I want to use this space to point you to some scripture. And I want to pray here in a little bit. I know a lot of people are going to watch this afterwards. And I just want to encourage you, like if you're in a messy middle and you need a prayer partner and you need somebody just to listen or you need somebody to walk with you through it or you need somebody to not just say, oh yeah, I'll pray for you, like praying for you. Um, although that's that's very nice and, and we love that, um, sometimes it's more powerful when we pray with each other. Who would agree? Would anyone agree? Sometimes we need to stop what we're doing and we just need to pray with each other. We need somebody who's going to get in the trenches with us. We need somebody who's going to fight the battle with us. We need somebody who's going to stand next to us and lift up our hands in praise where we may not have the strength to do that on our own, right? So I was looking at Romans um, 8. So I'm going to turn there real quick. Romans 8, verse 37. It says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. What does that even mean? What is more than a conqueror? Well, in my study, I have found that to be a conqueror means that you overcome something yourself. So let's say that you overcame an addiction. Let's say that you overcame financial hardship. Or let's say that you overcame you know, um, the fear of a loss of a job or something, right? Like that's awesome. Like celebration, praise God, hallelujah. That is amazing. But what does it mean to be more than a conqueror? And what I have found in my study and just in, in my heart, is I found that to be more than a conqueror means that not only do you overcome it, but that you speak and you praise and you declare over other people, um, in intercession or just praying with other people who might still be in the midst of that battle, in the midst of that storm. Hi, Bryn Minton. How are you, sweet girl? Hi, Jesse. Good to see you. I just, you girls, I just love you so much. And I'm so glad that you're joining in. And I would encourage you um, to like stay with me through to the end and then even catch maybe the beginning because I just feel super inspired to share kind of what's been going on in my life and in my day to day. And, um, and I'm to the point now where I just want to share words of encouragement for other people, not knowing a clue like what anyone else is going through, what anyone else is up against. But I just feel like the Lord just put it on my heart to, to stand up and declare the promises of God over people's life. And so we were talking 
talking right now about Romans 8, where it says we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And to be a conqueror means that you overcome something yourself. But to be more than a conqueror means that you, you preach and you, and you declare and you pray and you, you bless other people that might still be in the same battle and in the messy middle that you have overcome. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to anybody? So you could be more than a conqueror means you overcame. But to be more than a conqueror, did I say that right? Means that you are speaking promises and declaring that victory over other people today. So two other things that I found super, super encouraging is I've just spent some time with God as I'm going through my day and the fact that I just, I'm asking for God to come through. I'm asking for favor. I'm asking for some big things right now. Big to me, right? Big in my eyes, but not big to God because God is bigger than all things and nothing is impossible for him. And so although I might think it's a, it's a big deal and I'm asking for some big and mighty things right now, God's kind of just like, oh my daughter, like, that's so cute. You think that's a big deal for me, but it's not. So he's working on the blessing, even though I can't really see it right now. And I'm just believing that. And so you guys get to join in on what God is doing in my life and stand with me as I stand with you. And we're going to believe that God really is at work, even when we can't see it, even when we can't hear it, even when we don't feel it, even when it doesn't seem like that's what's happening because his promises are true and he does not, he's not a liar. God will not be mocked. He's not a liar. So I was going to point you to laughter. Sometimes we just need to laugh. We need to laugh at the f in the face of the enemy, right? So I was looking at Proverbs 17 verse 22 and it says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. So what can we do when we are feeling weak? It says that a cheerful heart is good medicine. So when we need that, hi, sweet girl, um, when we need strengthening and when we're feeling weak and when we're feeling we're in that dry place and we are parched in our spirit, it says that we can have a cheerful heart. That means put on, can you hear the dogs across the lake? Sorry if that's loud. But um, we need to put on something that's funny and learn to laugh in the face of our enemy. Anyone else? Does anyone else ever feel that way? Like... Let me get a little emoji hand raise. Because when we learn to laugh, it releases in our body, in our brain, and in our spirit endorphins that will help us to overcome what it is that we're struggling with. It'll give us the medicine in our spirit that we need to continue to persist, to continue to pray, to continue to praise, no matter what's going on in our world around us. And the other thing is, you've heard this one before, Proverbs 31, verse 25, where it says, she is closed in clothed in strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. Girls, sisters in Christ, we need to learn to laugh without fear of the future. I'm saying that to you because I need to hear it for myself, right? Yeah, this fun. Thanks, Nap. Uh, we need to hear that. We need to absorb that. I need it for myself. I need to remember that I am clothed in strength and dignity. I am a child of God. I am a co-heir with Christ. And no matter what's going on, even though I can't see it or feel it or understand it right now, that the, 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 that the glory of God is good. He's a good, good father. He's at work for us. And I'm just saying this, not just for me, but for you. I don't know who you, who in your world might need to hear a word of encouragement. I have no idea, but you do. And, and you are a vessel of that strength. And so I just want to empower you today and encourage you today to be that voice of love and strength in your world. Be it for yourself. Declare the promises of God over your life. Be that encouraging voice of reason and truth um, in the, in other people's lives and the, the people that God entrusted you with, the people you go to school with, the people you go to work with, the people in your neighborhood, your family members. Listen, our world right now is so full of chaos and struggle and strife and um, there's all this stuff that's that's going on, right? You turn on the news, you, you flick on social media, it's there, it's available for us. But we don't need to subscribe to every bit of information that we're fed, right? We can stand on the truth and the promises of God's word. We can declare that over other people. And we could be that source of strength, the pillars of righteousness, bringing peace in chaotic situations and in our world. So I hope that was encouraging. I hope that was encouraging for someone else today. I just felt like that's what the Lord was showing me and that's what he was bringing me to some of those scriptures and he was helping me remember that when we're feeling down and when we're feeling weak, one of the best things that we could do to be not just a conqueror but more than a conqueror 
is to pray and believe and declare that over others. And so I just feel the need to pray right now, if that's okay. I know this is live and this isn't very interactive, which is why I don't do this very often because I think it's weird. But I just want to pray peace and healing over everyone's life, anyone that's watching right now. As I myself am going through x-rays and wanting to find out what's going on with the pain in my body, I'm going to declare the complete healing over myself and anyone else in this moment. If you're experiencing any kind of back pain, neck pain, joint pain, jaw pain, frequent headaches, I am just releasing that now in the name of Jesus. I am calling forth the angels of heaven to minister to you and to your body to come to complete alignment with um, a fullness in Christ and a complete rejuvenation that all of your nerves and your joints and your cells in your body just come back into alignment again. Nothing out of alignment causing pain anymore. All of those headaches and all that pain must flee right now in the name of Jesus. If this is for you, raise your hand, send me a private message, let me know it's for you so that we can um, we can pray and believe that together. I want you to pray as if you've already received already received it and it shall be given to you. That's the promise of God. So if that's you and you want to accept this healing, pray as if you've already received it and it shall be given to you. So I'm, I'm believing for reports of complete healing now in the name of Jesus. So if that's you and it's working and God is moving in your life, I want you to send me a message so I can celebrate with you. I also want to pray for financial provision. It's something that I need right now. So I'm going to pray and believe that, declare that over everyone watching right now. If you're in need of financial provision, we are just going to petition heaven right now and believe that God is the ultimate banker, that he's not bankrupt. He hears our heart cries. He knows our financial situation. He is not ignorant. He's not dumb. He's not deaf. He's not sleeping. He's fully aware of your particular situation and your needs. And we're going to believe of supernatural miracles of financial provision coming upon anyone that's watching. So if that's you and you need it, send me a message, send me emoji. Let me know that that's you. Just receive it. Believe as if you've already received it and it should be given to you. So if you need financial provision, but declare it, receive it right now. Believe that it's coming for you and watch how God is going to move in your life and share with me. I think sometimes we're so quick to allow people to come into our prayer, right, with us. We're so quick to raise our hand and say, hey, pray with me and pray for me through these things. But we're slow to report the good news of God. And so we've got to share our testimonies in the ways that God is coming through for us so that we can stand um, in strength, that we can stand and celebrate with one another, not just pray with one another and believe for each other, but that we can also celebrate with one another when God really does come through and he reveals himself to be faithful and just in his promises. So what else? Healing, provision, financial provision, and I also just feel like I want to pray for laughter. I just want to pray that the Holy Spirit, who is really funny, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when Holy Spirit and I are just like super like unified, <laughs> um, he just causes me to laugh. He causes me to laugh in the face of my circumstances, in the face of the enemy. So for anybody right now that's feeling down and depressed and anxious, anyone that suffers with anxiety or fear or depression of any kind, I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to draw near to you in the form of laughter and that he's just going to allow this cheerful heart to just radiate within you and that you're just going to learn to laugh even when things are really difficult, like a holy laughter, an uncontrollable holy laughter that will just completely change the entire body composition from your mind to your heart to your spirit and that you will be strengthened in that moment, in those moments of just pure laughter that you are, you like Proverbs 31, 25 says where we are clothed in strength and dignity and we are going to laugh without fear of the future. I hope that was encouraging for you. I can't wait to hear from many of you today. I hope that I'm standing with you, that I'm, I'm, that God is with you for you, not against you. And I, as your sister, am here to, 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 to rally you up and to, to stand with you, to pray with you, to believe with you. I'm just a message away. So thank you for giving me some of your time. Thanks for those of you that joined, and thanks for those that are watching later that are going to send me messages and say what's up. Have a good night, everyone.